Hey, it's Michelle, you're watching Tokyo Pass 3. <laughs> I wanted to do that at least once. Wow, this is actually smoky. Whew. Okay, I wanted to do that at least once. So what was that for, you ask? It's because the YouTube channel has finally reached 500 subs. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm really glad that this tiny channel is providing you some kind of entertainment. Anyway, can you believe that it's already September? Sometimes I don't even feel the seasons passing because of all the time I spend in my room locked up, like everybody else, I guess. But having a kamemushi infiltrate my room was a huge reminder that summer is already on its way out. If you're not familiar with kamemushi, consider yourself lucky. They're called stink bugs in English and they appear around September in Japan. They usually stick to your laundry while you're airing them out and then when you open the door or your window to your room, they infiltrate and terrorize you for the rest of your day. But we're not here to talk about bugs today. You've read the title of this video and you clicked on it, you know what it's gonna be about. Which is good because I really want to ask you if you've ever experienced this. Based on the current data and trends, I propose this logically sound solution to the problem. Mmm, I'm not so sure. Okay, is there anything about the data that you want me to clarify? It's not really the data, it's just that I don't know, I don't feel like this is what we should do. Hey, I'm white and male. I'm gonna say the same things Michelle just did, except that, hey, I'm white and male. Oh my gosh, your ideas are so brilliant. Let's do them. Or maybe something like this. All right, can you share your thoughts with us? Well, based on what we experienced just now and my background, I say this. Okay, great. How about you, white man? What are your thoughts? Well, this is my grandiose idea that you should listen to. I see. I kind of like what Mijal said. Can you just say what she said and that's what we're going to use on camera. Obviously, these have been exaggerated to highlight a point. I've combined and summarized several experiences in these two situations because guess what? This has happened throughout my career several freaking times. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of being brown and female in corporate Japan. Okay, look, I get it. I know that there are several factors other than my gender and skin color that may be contributing to the end result. Maybe there's something about my personality or the way I present my ideas that make people become less receptive when I present them and more when others do. But when this happens several times, you have to wonder how much of the cost can be attributed to the individual and how much of it is structural. Let's dissect this issue a little bit further and look at these two factors. First, being a brown foreigner in Japan. In preparation for this video, I actually looked up if there were similar experiences to mine and the search term that I used was Asian in Japan racism. And yes, I found videos, I found articles, but guess what? Among these Asians in Japan, there were hardly any accounts from people like me. Most of the narrative is being told by American-born Asians or Chinese and Korean immigrants. I mean, Asia is a big-ass continent, it has different regions. But when the conversation is about Asia, many people just think of Northeast Asians. The rest of us are hardly part of the conversation, whether these articles or videos are in English or in Japanese. There is an utter lack of voices. We are muted and nowhere to be found. And then there's being a woman. You know, the Philippines has its fair share of gender issues, but Japan, oof, Japan. Just the fact that it ranks 120th out of 156 countries in the latest global gender gap report is telling. In this society, our worth is inescapably tied to our ovaries. We are supposed to find our ultimate value in reproduction and no matter how we hone our skills in different aspects, they will never be as great, as holy, as divine as being able to give birth to another human being. You'd feel it in your 20s, yes, but it hits a lot harder in your 30s when your male colleagues are making leaps and bounds in their career while yours is as stagnant as muddy, murky water. You'll feel it when you're being paid a million yen less for having the same skill set, or perhaps even a better one. 
You'd feel it when you go to events in your industry and the room stops to listen to every word a so-called male professional in your field utters when what's being said is so paper thin it won't even account for a BuzzFeed listicle. So yes, when people would rather listen to a white man saying the same thing as I do or use a white man's face to say my words, I don't think it's just a problem brought about by a singular set of circumstances. It's an overlap of structural injustices. No, I'm not trying to discredit the achievements of white men. There are many out there who are undoubtedly much smarter than I am and much more skillful. And I do understand that they are facing their own set of challenges here in Japan. But just as this is factual, so are the realities of many brown women facing unjustified rejection every day. The only difference is that our experiences are not being heard, not being talked about. And it gets really tiring, you know? Being at the intersection of two disadvantaged groups requires you to work twice, thrice as hard to get to the same level of success. And even then you find yourself questioning, how much harder do I have to work to prove myself? To be honest, I don't think this will change in my lifetime. But at the very least, I want to put a brown female voice out there saying, Hi, we exist. I hope you haven't forgotten about us. There's something we can bring to the conversation too, you know? <sighs> it hurts just saying it. <laughs> and I encourage other brown women to do the same. After all, when we leave footprints deep enough for others to find, the path becomes easier to walk for those after us. This has been Michelle for Tokyo Pass 3. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!